So today we have another FC24 career mode video. This video is going to be about the things you should do when you start FC24 career mode. These are my best tips for when I start my own saves, so I hope it helps you out as well. If you play career mode hardcore, you probably will know all the things I speak about in this video, but if you're a beginner, this should help you get started. This is part two, and we've got a lot more tips to talk about in this video as well. If you do enjoy the video, please leave a like for me and make sure you subscribe to get more FC24 tips and tricks. Another thing you should do before you even start playing games in career mode is check your youth academy. You've got a set of starting 11 players, your reserves and subs. They make up the club, but there's also youth academy players, which are hidden in the squad section as well. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that there's youth players in the game, but just in case this is your first ever football game, there's Youth Academy players as well. You want to check your Youth Academy out straight away because there might be a nice player or two in there that you can bring up to the first team. Here we've got a few players in the Youth team that don't look very promising at the moment. You can choose to do whatever you want with them. You can release them or promote them. Another thing you should do while we're here is go to the transfers and go to Youth Staff and start getting your Youth Scouts out into the world. So you can set up your regions, you can pick from different countries, and you can also now search for specific positions, which is a new feature. So if you want to do that, you can set your scouts up for that. After three months, they'll find some good quality players for you that you could use in your youth academy and eventually promote them into the senior team and give them some game time as well. Another thing you should take a look at when you start is the training plan. Now, I think training's a little bit different this year. I don't think there's like weekly schedules where every second day you have to train. It just sort of does this. I don't know. I can't find the, the training option like last year. So I think they got rid of it. Anyway, you want to go to the training plan and take a look at this new feature. So pretty much you can do individual plans for different players. You can put them on performance focused training, which greatly increases their sharpness, but decreases their fitness. Or you can put them on more energy focused plans, which greatly increases fitness, but decreases sharpness. For starting 11 players, I would recommend maybe keeping it on balanced or maybe more energy focused plans because they're playing the games anyway. You shouldn't have to worry about sharpness too much. Players in the reserves should probably be on more performance focused plans if they're not going to get enough game time with you. And also the subs should probably be on more performance focused plans because they're not going to get much game time anyway. Now with this, you can do it individually or you can set it up for a whole section of players, a whole group. So you can do Ramsdale's plan here, energy focused. And when you press the Y button, you can choose to apply it for the starting 11 or for all players. So you can do that for all of them. You can even go to the subs and pick this plan for Trossard and then press the Y or triangle button and apply for all players or for subs and reserves. So that's how it works. You can do it all individually or do it as groups. But yeah, I don't think there's any um, training like last year where you would have to do different drills and sim the drills and stuff like that. I think they got rid of that feature. Another thing you should check out as you start your saves is the squad hub and more specifically player development plans. Go to the squad hub and pick any of your players in the club. Click on development plan and that launches this feature. The cool thing about this feature is that you get to target certain attributes. If you leave it on balanced, it will target a few different attributes, but not as effectively. But if you go on attacking wide back, it does hit sprint speed, acceleration, crossing, short pass curve, and a few other things there. And it hits them more effectively than if they were just on a balanced plan. So for some players, these plans could be more beneficial than others. Let's say you have a center back and you wanna make him a stopper, you would click that and it would target acceleration better than if you were to leave him on a balanced plan. Even sprint speed gets targeted better there. So it depends on what you want to do with these players. You don't have to do it for all the players, but some will benefit more than others. You might want to turn your striker into a poacher, which will increase his finishing, attacking position, and shot power and penalties as well. While we're here, there's another thing you should do, and that's position conversions. For this example, we're going to use Enketia, where you can turn him from a striker into a center forward. It would only take two weeks, and he becomes a center forward in the game. This feature is good, because sometimes you might not have the budget to actually buy players for certain positions that you need. So you can just use what you've got here and change the positions for the players. Some players will fit better in your formation if you convert their positions as well. The quicker you get this sorted, the better because some do take a long time. So you want to get this sorted straight away. The next thing you need to do is determine your signings. If the transfer window is open, you might want to sign some players. So go to the scout report, see what the scouts have found for you. You can also do scouting instructions. So you might want to send your scouts out as well because the quicker you do it, the better. You can find a lot of different players around the world. Initially, there'll be players there that the scout has already found, but you can alter their instructions to find what you're looking for specifically. Now, there is a website called sofifa.com that will help you research players for career mode as well. It tells you the stats of every player in the game, and the best bit about this site is that it has filters to help you find what you're looking for more specifically. So let's say you're looking for young players, 19 and younger. You could put 19 in the filter there, and basically you can submit that and it comes up with players that are 19 or younger. And you can filter from overalls, potentials, 
their value as well. It's a really, really good website. I've been using this for years as well. Sort of like a cheat sheet though, but hey, if it's available and you want to use it, why not, you know? You can even search up players that have real faces only. So if you want to do that, you can filter the real face yes option, and then you can also filter their growth. So let's say you want players that have a 15 plus growth. Let's see what happens there. So we're going to submit that. And we have some players here like Iker Bravo from Real Madrid, 67 overall to an 83 potential. There's Hall there as well, and there's a few other players there as well. So pretty much the possibilities are endless here. You can find what you're looking for very easily on SoFIFA.com. It's definitely a site that career mode players should pay attention to. Another thing you should do after a game or two in career mode is adjust the gameplay settings. Go to the customized section in career mode, go to settings there. You can adjust your difficulty and half length, but you can also set competitor mode on or off. If you enable this setting, you will face a more challenging opponent that simulates the play style of some of the world's best FC players. The setting can only be enabled on legendary or ultimate difficulty. There's also another difficulty called player-based difficulty. Star players on the CPU AI team will have enhanced intelligence while they are being controlled. So you can turn both of these on you can leave one off if you want i recommend leaving competitor mode off and maybe turning on player based difficulty but of course you can play around and see what you like you can even adjust the game speed there and then of course if you go to camera you can change your camera angles as well there's sliders that you can adjust as well i think i'm waiting for people to release proper sliders before i touch any of this stuff but yeah if you don't like the way the default gameplay is you can go into the sliders options here and customize them for the user and CPU as well. Another thing you need to do when you start is check for expiring contracts. Go to the Squad Hub once again, go to the Financial tab and filter out the contract expiry length. So the lowest ones are under a year. As you can see, there's a couple players here. If it gets under six months, they're free to negotiate with any other clubs. So you wanna get these sorted straight away for players that you wanna keep. Let's say you've got Jorginho, you want to, you know, delegate a renewal or do a contract negotiation with him as soon as possible. He hasn't got much time left. And then there's a few other guys there as well. Very important, like I said, to get this sorted straight away because if it drops to six months and under, they can negotiate with clubs and they can leave your club as well. So you don't want to forget about this. Now, if you pick a club in career mode that is licensed but has a generic stadium like Barcelona, you can change the name of the stadium. You can even customize the stadium a bit. I recommend changing the name of the stadium because it sort of helps. It's better than having Libertador. You can just call it the Camp Nou, even though it's not the real thing. You can even customize the seat colors and all that to make it a little bit more realistic if you want. You don't have to do this one straight away, but you might want to do it when you start. You can go and edit your players in career mode as well. So basically go to the customize section, go to edit players, and then you can pick from your team. And let's say you want to change the boots on your guy. You can even change the kits if they're tucked in or untucked. And uh, there's the boots there. So you can change his boots. You can do it for all the players in the game, I believe, even their socks gloves and wrist accessories as well. You can save that. I think you can do it, like I said, for other clubs. So yeah, if you click on that, you should be able to. Yep, so you can do that if you want. So those were my tips for starting career mode. If I missed anything, leave a comment with your suggestions as well.